Hello, third part of this uh, third lesson. It was Aristotle with his fantastic genius who found a way to define starting from being. Otherwise, philosophy was blocked forever, forever. Firstly, if we consider the definition of being, being is what exists, what has existence. If we look closely, we will see that there are two notions. We have, on the one hand, what, and on the other, existence. Being is something that has the existence. In fact, what we are saying here does not sound very correct, because this uh, something is necessary being, and therefore already exists, yes. But nothing prevents us from considering it apart from its existence. It is something that is never without existence, because what does not have existence does not exist, obviously. But we can consider the thing apart from existence as not identifying with the existence itself. And that is the essence, what makes the thing what it is. What makes the horse a horse, the mouse a mouse, the event, an event. It is not existence. It is, it is what determines existence in a certain way. It is what makes it a certain form of existence. You understand? This very fact that this essence does not identify with existence is what allows us to distinguish it from existence. Because if it identified with existence, we could not distinguish it. And that would be the death of philosophy, because, because we could not advance. We could not get out from this notion of being with which we can define nothing as it is in itself. This is why certain trends of philosophy said that there is only existence, like the existentialist. Other, others that there is only essence, like the essentialist, having no succeed to make this distinction. In fact, we have here, in germ, the difference between the creature and the creator. We will see indeed that God is the being who has existence by him himself, who is existence, and therefore who has no distinction in him be between essence and existence. His characteristic precisely is to be existence itself. We will see that. The creature has a distinction between essence and existence precisely because its essence is not identified by with existence. Its essence is a certain form of existence. It is not the existence itself. For example, as we will see, the rabbit has, has a rabbit existence. It is not existence itself, with all the forms it can take. Otherwise, it would be all things, it would be God. 
it has only this form of existence, the form of the rabbit. And this form of existence, it is its essence. The essence of the rabbit, which added to existence, gives the real rabbit. There is a real distinction between essence and existence in creature. Oh, no, there is a real distinction between essence and existence in creature, in creatures. And it is having discovered that which will allow us to advance in our knowledge, to start from this notion of being, to define all things. Otherwise, the problem was insoluble. And we verify that we do not advance by adding a notion to being to define, but that we distinguish in being itself on the one hand, on the one hand, the essence, and on the other hand, the existence. Being is what exists, and there is a real distinction between essence and existence, at least in creatures. Then, in the search, we don't touch existence. It does not really help us to know, but to make sure that things exist. It is something very mysterious, of which everything is imbued for to be, but which does diversify, diversify nothing by itself. Everything that exists has this existence, not to the same degree, degree obviously, but the same essentially. Inasmuch as by it all that exists, exists. Essence, on the other hand, as we have seen, is what will allow us to define everything, to, de to diversify being, since, since that is what makes a thing what it is and that it is the definition, in fact, the essence, and the definition. It is the same thing except that the essence is in the things, whereas the definition is on paper, paper expressed by, with words after having passed by human intelligence. But basically, it's exactly, it is exactly the same thing, huh? a sense uh, definition. The being, therefore, is made up of a sense and existence. It is a real distinction in being. It is not a distinction of reason. Essence and existence are really distinguished in being. This does not mean that we can separate them. Essence and existence are never one without the other. But it is not because they cannot be effectively separated that they are not really distinct, distinct in being. We were forced to admit it. It's a distinction in being itself, in all being. And therefore, from there, this essence will either be comprising matter to give a corporal being or not comprising matter to give an immaterial being or comprising life, or not comprising it, etc. And so, we will can define every being of this world 
which is each device in its essence, although it has existence like all others. Another very important distinction in metaphysics is not in being itself, in all being, but dividing being in two sets. The being which exists in itself, which is called the substance, and two, the being which exists in another, in another which exists only in something else and which is called accident. For example, a man is a substance because he does not exist in anything else but in himself, so to speak. The color of his hair, on the other hand, does not exist in itself. It exists in him, in his hair. Aristotle discovered this by noting that, in language, we attribute certain things to others, but that other things, we do not attribute them to other things, but they are themselves subject of attribution. For example, to a man we attribute quantities of things, such as sight, weight, intelligence, skill. But the man himself, we attribute it, we attribute it to nothing. He exists in himself. He does not need anything else to exist in himself. Where greatness, weight, intelligence, skill never exist in themselves, but in something else, as in a man, and we attribute it. The accident, in fact, we understand, is not a being in its own right. It is an incomplete, imperfect, incomplete, imperfect being. Since it cannot exist in itself, but is always dependent on another being, on a substance. It does, however, have its own existence, insofar as it is distinguished from substance. In that, it is not the same thing but it is essentially dependent on the thing. For example, Paul is a substance, he is a, he is a being that exists in, in himself, but his color, for example, white or black, it is not exactly him, it is something of him. And the proof of that is that his color can change. Well, he will remain the same. For example, he can tan, change his skin color, his skin color, where he will remain himself always, essentially, essentially the same. Always, man. Which does not, which does not would be if its color was its substance, because the substance is the essence, as we have seen. This is what defines being. This is which does and says what being is. And to change the substance, it is to change the being. This is, what, this is what allows us to distinguish in being substance and accident. Everything cannot be accident, since it is something that cannot exist in, in, in itself, but always in another, in another being. And not everything is substance, because we see some things 
change and remain and remain essentially the same thing. As a man which would not be if there were any substances. Because if a, if a substance change, the being must also change essentially, since essence and substance are the same thing. <coughs> so substance and accidents really stand out in being. Substance and accident are the very first things that can be attributed to a being. <coughs> being is either substance or accident. The being is divided into substance and accident, to be in oneself or to be in another. You understand? It's very important what we say here. Uh, it is a little uh, fastidious to to read this now, but uh, we will see after uh, how it is important. It is thus understood that these are the most universal ways of attributing something to a being, any being which exists, particularly in the world is either substance or accident. This is the first thing you can and should say about him. Aristotle depend, depended these most universal ways of attributing something to being and found substance and nine kinds of accidents. That is to say, ten in all, most universal ways to attributing one thing to another. These are the most universal ways of attributing one thing to another, in that you cannot group two of them to make a whole. They are said to be irreducible to each other. There are so called the ten categories. These ten categories are substance and nine accidents. That is to say, quality, quantity, relationship, time, place, action, passion manner of being, position. Everything that is attributed to a being falls into one of these categories. Everything that a being is or does is or does is found in one of these categories. All being, in fact, is the full complete sense, in the full complete sense, is substance or is a certain particular determination of this substance, which is its quality in the philosophical sense, as an Eskimo is a kind of man by this accident, which is quality. This body substance still has a certain quantity of size, often has one or more relationships, as with his father, of which he is the son, of which he is the son, is in a certain time, a certain place, as has a certain activity, a certain action, and there was often to something and therefore has a certain patient, has a certain way of being, that is, for a man, having a suit, and has a certain position, 
Leistung dem. There are the ten most universal ways to attribute something to a being, to a substance, not to a, a being. We do not determine the beings by adding a difference to being, which would be something other than being, like we said. For whatever we add to being, as we said, it will always be being. But we understand that there are ten ways for the being to be being, so to speak. The being which is either the substance or, or one of the nine accidents. Any accident is one of these nine accident category, categories. The substance is diversified by adding differences. And we obtain the four main classes of beings in this world, which we have already seen. It is the famous porphyry tree. Among substances, in fact, we find of them some corporeals and some incorporeals, like God and the angels. We will see that. To the notion of corporeal, if we had in the net definition the life difference, we have living bodily substances like plants and non-living ones like, like minerals. To the living bodily substance, we had the different sensible knowledge and we have animals if to the animal substance we had reason, we obtain the definition of man. All that is found in the universe is one of these broad places. Definitions of all beings in the universe will be obtained by adding differences to one of these broad classes. For example, the horse is an animal that is like this and like that, and that we add all that we add to the general notion of animal to obtain the definition of the horse. You can verify in one dictionary. It's like that for all definition. An extremely important remark on this subject is that we have here the ways of defining beings in their very essence. That is to say, in their heart, in their center, in the heart of the being, because we start from the notion of being itself, in which is included very clearly the essence and existence uh, as we have seen. The great drama of knowledge today is that we are often satisfied with descriptive, descriptive definitions, which give a certain knowledge of things, but with which we remain on the periphery of being at the descriptive level without get to the essential point at the heart of it. And as a result, most of the knowledge is often lacking. Intelligence remains on its hunger because the intelligence is made for the being. It is its own obje object, and if we only give it the periphery, it is as if we were feeding it with feelings. It can make you smile, but if you look closer, 
That is the point where we are today with these sciences, which we pompously call sciences with a capital S. For example, physical mathematics gives a mathematical description of the universe, which concerns only the accident of quantity, not knowing and not wanting to know being in itself. You know? But the door remains wide open to error with regard to the essential questions of life, of being itself, because we know little about it. So the principle of all knowledge is being, it is the very first notion to define, or the last that we find when we go to the, bot the bottom of being, of reality. It is thus understood that one cannot make metaphysics of concepts detached from existence, as some, peop as some people wanted to do. Metaphysics will always be essentially related to existence, because its subject is the being, and being is necessarily what exists. It is by abandoning its primary vocation to being that metaphysics has lost his way in some people into systems of concepts that have nothing to do with reality. Because once disconnected from being and therefore from existence, the mind no longer has a reference and can only go astray. A metaphysics of concepts is a complete nonsense. What we are saying here is extremely important. We must keep this carefully throughout these courses. The notion of being has given rise in philosophy to a principle called the principle of identity, which flows directly from the notion of being. Likewise, in fact, that the notion of being is the basis of any definition, so the principle of identity is the basis of any proposition, eh? you know. A proposition is a set of words with a verb. This principle reads, being is, or being is what it is. This is what affirms the identity of being with himself. Its negative form, perhaps better known, is a principle of contradiction, which reads as follows. The same thing, the same thing cannot at the same time be and not be in the same respect. The principle of identity, the being, is, seems completely useless so much, it seems of abuse, and yet we do not realize the extra importance it has in all human knowledge. In fact, there is as much of it as the notion of being which is not surprising, since it results from it, and that it is in a similar way that it was discovered. Likewise, in fact, that at any definition, 
we must suppose at the outset the notion of being. Likewise, likewise, at any proposition, we must suppose at the outset the principle of identity. Right? You understand? Indeed, any proposition, like any notion, is more or less obvious and just as to explain a concept, to define it. We seek simply a notion so to explain your prop so to explain your proposition, we seek simpler propositions. This happens in particular in reasoning which is precisely, as we will see, a process for making a proposition clear, which is not clear from clearer, more obvious propositions. And just as one cannot go back in the order of the more obvious notions, without arriving at the first notion which is obvious by itself, which does not need other simpler notions to be explained. Similarly, in the order of the most obvious propositions, one cannot go back indefinitely without arriving at the first, which is evident by itself which does not need more obvious propositions to be demonstrated. This is a principle of identity. The principle of identity, therefore, is in theory first in the order of the propositions, and it is the affirmation of the identity of being with itself the being is, and we see that we join the notion of being, that it arises from it, because to affirm that the being is, it is necessary that the being be, and it is necessary to grasp it as such. And from the moment one grasps being, one immediately sees, without any demonstration, that being is, there is nothing more obvious. We thus understand how this principle, being completely prime, or prime, is contained in any proposition, just as the notion of being is contained in any definition, and it must be contained, otherwise the proposition cannot not be true. It will not be linked to existence, which constitu constitutes the truth for a proposition, as we will see. We thus see how this principle is extremely important in knowledge, so much so that any error is a violation of this principle. Indeed, what is error? If not that, what is? Is not, or that, what is not, is. Huh? Indeed, what is error? If not that what is is not, or that what is what is not is. Eh? We will see this. For example, if I say that the horse has fins, I make a mistake. I say that is the horse is not because the horse with fins. It does not exist. <laughs> Similarly, when I say that 
I say that what is notice that is to say that a horse which has fins which does not exist I say that it exists I say that what is not is so we see the importance of the principle of identity in our life because all our problems come mainly from error, as we have seen. And any error is a violation of the principle of identity. It is a fatal use, obviously, in obvious things, but its usefulness appears in the preparation of knowledge. When one moves away from the obvious, when one cannot remain in the truth only by remaining faithful to him. It is a principle for knowledge and not for being. Because being is always what it is, obviously. But in knowledge, especially in things that are not obvious, more complex, it may not remain what it is. In this case, we rather use of its negative form, which is a principle of contradiction. The principle of contradiction is what allows us to know when we contradict ourselves in our recessions which is a sure sign of error because in their two contradictory propositions there is necessary one that is false if not both precisely precisely for this reason reason that the same thing cannot be and not be at the same at the same time We will also see that the principle of identity, identity, was not at all abused at the beginning as the beginning of philosophy. Because some will deny it by denying being and others will affirm it by affirming, affirming being. It is a crucial we were talking about earlier that will split philosophy into two main currents which will remain until today. We understand how the current which denies being and the principle of ident identity and contradiction is a source of innumerable errors and therefore innumerable and misfortunes for humanity. Thoughts lead the world and poison thoughts poison poison it. As we will see in geology we saw this as in philosophy there have always been systems for denying the truth the reality against the truth of essence there was a system called essentialism which show in things only existence and, and not essence. It is true that it is not an easy concept to grasp, but if we do not admit it, if there is no essence in things, there will not be what makes that they are what they are. 
there will be nothing that makes them what they are. And then, how could they be? They will not be able to exist. And so, by denying the sense, we also deny existence. If there is not in the horse what makes him a horse, how can he be a horse? And likewise, the essence is what tells us what the thing is, which answers the question, what is it? And therefore, if there is no essence, there is no answer to the question we ask about all realities, and therefore no science, it would be total ignorance, which is completely false. Yeah? Other systems have denied existence and have retained only the essence, which are called essentialism. But if there is no existence, there is no being, and therefore there is only nothingness, nothing exists, not even essence. Among the famous feature of philosophy, we deny being, there is Hegel, who succeeded in this uh, feat of making believe that being is nothing. <laughs> that is to say, that being not exists. He, each demonstration, obviously, is faulty. We will briefly show how. Here is how he puts it. Being is indeterminacy. But indeterminacy is nothingness. Therefore, being is nothingness. Let us take the equal signal. To be equals, sing equals. To be indeterminacy, to be equals indeterminacy, indeterminacy equals nothingness, therefore to be equals nothing, nothingness. So the demonstration is false in that the term indeterminacy is not taken in the same way in both cases. In the second case, it is taken absolutely because nothingness is total indeterminacy and not in the first because the notion of being if we manage to grasp it by freeing it from any particular form of, of existence, it is not, however, total indetermination, since we distinguish in it the essence and existence, which is far from nothing. Hegel's demonstration is therefore totally false. And it is perhaps even the most monumental error that we have ever produced in the history of philosophy. Philosophy. A diabolical error, that is to say totally as a service of organized lies on which Hegel will build all his philosophy. Hegel, considered to be the greatest philosopher of the 19th century. And by denying being, he will consequently deny the principle of identity 
and the principle of contradiction, and much more. He will make contradiction the main engine of his philosophy, and he can clearly recognize the active error we have been talking about. Active error. When we know that Marx and Engels, the founder of communism, were students of Hegel, we understand how the contradiction among, among the communists is something logical. It is not dishonesty for them. It is what follows logically their philosophy. One also denies the notion of substance, like the phenomenists, who admit only what appears to the senses, what is visible, audible, measurable. We've, we have, in particular, in this genre, the positivism of Auguste Comte, and of all the science of today, which results from it, like I stands, as it was pointed out earlier. For them, they're not, for them, there are only accidents, which they do not name so, obviously, and no substance underneath. But then, if so, how could accident be sustained if they have nothing else to exist, if they cannot support themselves? How could color, for example, exist without anything colored? is completely absurd. Some physicists even come to deny the being by dint of considering a real as real only what is measurable. We will see how the notion of substance help us, help, helps us among other things, to understand transubstantiation in the sacrament of Eucharist. Well, this third uh, lesson is finished uh, soon for the fourth.